Good morning, everyone. This is the lesson, lesson study time, and we are, we are happy to be, to be here once again um, to fellowship one with the other and to spend some quality time um, looking at the Word of God as, uh, as it applies um, to us. Let me invite you at the very start to bow your heads and let us have a word of prayer. Father God, uh, this is no doubt um, your holy day. Father, we are glad that no other day could trump this day. This is the day that you have made for your people to remember um, your work of creation. This is the day that you have made so that your people can remember how uh, powerful a God you are. It is a day when we can remember that you are sovereign God, and beside you there is none else. This is a day where we can remember that um, as God, you stepped out in nothing. When nothing was under you, nothing above you, nothing around you, and you spoke to nothing, and something came. What a God you are, and Lord, this day, this day, this Sabbath day, is a day where we can remember those very things. And so we bow in your awesome presence. We ask now that you will just open up um, uh, the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on us as we spend this time in your word. I pray and ask these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. You know, we, um, we, have been, we have been told, we have been told that Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy is present truth. <laughs> um, Deuteronomy is present truth. But what is present truth? What is present truth? Well, let me, let me hasten to, um, um, to suggest to you. That in uh, the in uh, the the um, the time of um, the Exodus, at that time Deuteronomy was truth relevant for that particular period. Um, it was um, truth relevant for um, the children of Israel, and I want you to know, my friends, that this truth falls on uh, the continuum line. That is to say, it is relevant for today as well. And when tomorrow comes, that truth will be relevant for tomorrow. The truth of Deuteronomy is relevant for yesteryear. It is relevant for today. And it will be relevant for the future to come, present truth. And so we ought to read this every opportunity we get. Our lesson this week is captioned, For what nation is there so great? <laughs> for what nation is there so great? Well, let me, let me turn it around and, and let it read as, uh, as we speak. What nation is as great as this nation? The Bible is saying, what nation is as great as this nation? Speaking of the children of Israel, what nation is as great as the children of Israel? And if we jump into today's day, present truth. What nation is as great as our nation? 
And when we talk about nation here, um, give, me, give me some latitude and some license. And let me suggest to you that we are talking about God's people. We are talking about the Seventh-day Adventist church that you and I belong to. We have been called out. And we have been given a solemn responsibility to reach the world, to reach the communities around us. And guess what? Uh, the Lord just did not call us and send us out. He has promised to be with us. He has promised to be in our mouths. He, will, he has promised to be in our minds. He has promised to be in every part of us that when you see me, when, when the community see us, they see Jesus Christ. They see the God of heaven. And so I pose the question again. What people or what nation is as great as this people, God's people, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Because we have been given a message for such a time as this. One that we cannot shirk from. We must embrace it with all that we have. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 8, And what great nation is there that has such statutes and a righteous judgments as are in all this law which I set before you this day? <laughs> what other people have been given such an awesome responsibility. What other people have been given such statutes and righteous judgments like these people? And you know, the, um, the, the, the question is posed. But guess what? The implication is that there is no other nation as this nation. There is no other people as this people because God has called this people uh, to be his mouthpiece. And whenever and however you are privileged um, to be called by God, then that makes you special indeed. And so... Um, we will progress through our lesson this week. And uh, Sunday's section says, do not add or take away. <laughs> do not add or take away. And in studying this lesson, I found, I found um, this particular section quite interesting. Do not add or take away. Now, let me, let me just ask a question. Um, what is your understanding of this? Um, do not add or take away um, from, uh, from what you have studied this week. What do you understand by this? Any thoughts? Okay. Um, so, so our brother, our brother is saying that uh, that um, the Lord in His Word said His Word is settled in heaven, and if it is settled in heaven, there is nothing that anybody can do that can derail that which God has settled in heaven. Can I invite you to come down um, to the microphone, please, if possible? Please come. It's okay, come. Um, to me, when it says, do not add or take away, it, to me, you cannot improve on God's law. God's law is perfect. God is perfect, and he's the one that gave the law to the children of Israel, so you cannot improve on that. Later on, we saw the Pharisees. They added 
to the word of God and it caused confusion. And people saw the Sabbath as a burden rather than delight because they added their own tradition to it. But God's law, God's word cannot be improved upon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Brother Jeffrey. Yes, I agree with what my dear sister Anita said, but adding to that also, God gave 10 commandments, not 12 nor 9, but 10, and we should do our best to keep and follow those commands that the Lord gave. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I, 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 rather, I rather like um, the, 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 the point that, um, that Anita made just now. And, um, and Brother Jeffrey alluded to. And let me just let Sister Ruth speak, and then I'll come back to that. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Now, here we find that uh, God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. And here, Deuteronomy says, Obey the commandments I give you. You must not add anything to them or subtract anything from them. They remain as they are, as they've been given. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, when, when, something, when something is complete, it is complete. If something is perfect, then it has no flaws. It has no, you know, it has no impurities. It has no wrong. Um, it is perfect. Per perfection cannot be improved upon. And if, and if God has given his law, the Bible says the law of God is perfect, converting the soul. Is that what the Bible says? The law of God is perfect. And if, and if, you, if you are going to try to change the law of God, then that, that is actually saying you know more than the Almighty God. I'll, I'll come back to that point. Yes, sir. The question I would like to ask, when we do, when we do something out of God's character, does he understand? It's a question. All right, um, I'll, I'll take that up in just, in just one moment. The, the law of God, I said before, is perfect. And anyone, anyone who tries to add anything or subtract anything from, from God's words is trying to take the place of God. Is actually saying that you or me or anybody else know more than God. What is such, that is such a, an offense um, to, the, to the mind of God? Um, before you ask the question, let me, let me just... Um, so we don't have two questions on the floor. Um, Brother, Brother Murray is asking, whenever we do something that flies against the instruction of God, um, is God pleased? Is that what you're saying, sir? Does he understand? Does he understand? Um, of course. Of course. Um, God, God has superior knowledge and, and superior wisdom. And you understand where we are coming from. But the question is, does he accept it? <laughs> does he accept it? Um, if God says don't do it, he means don't do it. And, and God is not going to say, well, I understand, so let it be. Not at all. Um, he says don't do it. And there is nothing that we can do to make that right. If God said don't do it, we don't do it. And if we do it, we are displeasing God. Yes, he warned us in um, Deuteronomy 12, 32. He warned you carefully. This is what he said. My commandment, you be careful. That's what he said. Carefully observe it. And you must not allow take away. No, some, some, Look, I use this word. Some society believe in nine commandments. Nine. But they don't believe in ten. And they said one, one society believe in one and don't believe in nine. It's not so it go. Now, if you believe in the one that they said you believe in the whole ten, and I want to prove this to you, 
if you believe faithfully in the fourth commandment, the fourth commandment, that covered the entire ten. And Jesus said, two new commandments I give to you. It's in the same ten. He said, um, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God with all heart, with all mind, with all strength. And then the last one, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, on these two, hung. You know, say hang. Hang is put at your neck. Hung is like you hung a thing on two inches. That's the whole, whole thing together. That's what it is. So if you believe in the fourth commandment, the whole thing hung there. You believe that. So he said, he said, he said so they hit carefully, that's the word we use. Carefully, that's what does not add, now take away. But we find men try to add, and you find the word follow after add, and not take away. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Um, I was going to ask the question, um, in our church, as in many other churches, the churches have traditions which are not our doctrines, which are not uh, from the commandments, but they have traditions. Um, is that the church adding to God's word? That's my question. Are you uh, you're going to answer the question? Well, it may come in, but I was going more towards uh, brother brother Murray. But it may it may touch it. Okay. Where I'm going to, the Lord knows where we are in terms of you know we're adding or taking away. He's looking at our understanding. Now, in terms of of, of uh, where we are, those that may not know and they don't realize they're adding, the Lord will permit you to understand one day. But then where do you take it from there? You're either going to add or take it, but you have to face the consequences. Now, once again, that's why I was saying it may come a bit towards uh, Sister Allen, as in, you know, where these other, other uh, denominations and so forth, remember where they're also coming from. They probably may not know the truth. Well, we had, well, that's true, but then that's us adding in. But then the word is there. Where are you going? What are you following? Search, and then you would know. But like I said, the Lord will permit you to understand, but where do you go from there? Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, tradition, come through. Uh, tradition, uh, tradition is not, thus saith the Lord. And uh, thus saith the Lord is a divine imperative. And that is the only thing that is binding upon us. The divine imperatives. Traditions come and go. Sometimes our tradition um, militates against God's word. Um, and, you know, we have, what, we have what we call in our, in, in our churches um, democracy. Um, and democracy, you vote, democracy says you vote. We do not vote when God says something. Whenever God says, do this, we don't vote to find out if we should. We do it. We do it. Um, a tradition has a way of, um, you know, we, and, and we package it in such a way and say, the Bible says, the Bible says nothing. It is our tradition and our tradition, whenever it militates against God's words, it should be dumped. Yes, I was just answering Sister Aline's question. Please. But you have said some of the things that I was going to say. But we cannot do it our tradition in the church as long as it's, we, are, uh, we are not saying it's thus said the Lord. Anywhere you go in, in the world at this time, they will be having Sabbath school. Isn't that tradition? Divine service, the way we, order, we organize our service is tradition, but it's not thus set the Lord. So I don't think we can do without tradition as long as we are not changing anything that God said. But for the smooth running of the church and proper organization, we have to have a bit of tradition. The way some of us dress and come to church is tradition. Isn't that so? You know, so tradition has its place as long as it doesn't encroach upon the word of God. Thank you. Thank you so much. As, as I indicated earlier, um, nothing wrong with tradition. 
But if it militates against God's word, then it must be dumped. Um, tradition has, has, um, has their good points, but it must take its rightful place in, uh, in our lives. Um, the devil, the devil um, he has, he has um, his own way of trying to mash up what God, what God has, um, has put in place, what God has established. And, um, and the, the devil working through people, working through people, um, try to add rules and laws. And we see that in history. Um, for example, by mixing truth with pagan customs. That's, that is, that's against God's word. Um, they invent laws, establish, establishing tradition. Um, somebody spoke again about um, the... Um, the, 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 ten, the Ten Commandments. His brother Essen talked about the Ten Commandments. Um, you know, we know that in some circles, um, one of the commandments, or if not two of them, have been, have been uh, tampered with. Um, but that should never be. Yes, I am in agreement that the law of God is just good. It is final, and it is simple, so that everyone can understand it. And sometimes people or men would like to add, that makes complexity. God do not want complexity in what he says. It is final, cannot be improved upon. Sometimes as Seventh-day Adventists, we like to pat ourselves on the shoulder and say we have the truth. But does the truth really have us? By this I mean we want to say that we have the Sabbath truth. How well do we practice that Sabbath truth? You look at sunset, sunrise. How well do we guard the edges of the Sabbath? So even though we have the Sabbath truth, how well do we practice that truth? We may not outrightly say that we disagree or we violate or we don't agree with. But our actions, what does that say? Something to think about. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, let me just pick up from there to move on. Um, our actions. Our actions. Um, you know, um, we, we, were told, we were told that, and we, know, we all know the story and love the story. Balaam, Balaam was invited to curse God's people. Uh, just, just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment, sir. Uh, um, Balaam was invited to curse God's people, but God said to Balaam, "You must not do that. You can only do what I have put in your mouth to do. You must bless the people." You, you must bless the people. Um, and, um, and guess what? Guess what? And Balaam wasn't altogether happy with that. And what did he do? What did he do? He went and he concocted some, some scheme um, to circumvent what God had, had decided to do. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was coming something near to that. Do you know that this lesson has won us? Sunday lesson won us. I was coming here to you. I was coming here. No, but let I read it. Try, try to read it. The law of God was faulty and need reverse a large part of the professed Christian. They're talking we. Uh, of the professed Christian church by their attitude by the attitude, not by here, words show that they were accepting the same, accepting the same thought, our error, you put it right, error. They are accepting the same error. A lot of our people accepting the same error as who trying to add a reverse. And we are one. He said, that be careful that we don't accept the same error as those, they call us professed Christian. And they accept the same thing as what they do. 
because a lot of us today are going to run fast, and I don't want to go too far with it. It was the 29th of this last month when the, the Pope was to meet with the, with the um, President of America to discuss, sign the Sunday law. The 29th of last month, I see it myself. Oh. It was a the reason why a lot of us want to hide themselves from persecution. And by hiding yourself from persecution, you're going to accept the error. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, it is quite clear that um, if we don't um, if we don't watch ourselves, then errors will creep into what we um, what we do. But let me um, let me just highlight to you that um, whenever we go against God's law then there are severe consequences. There are severe consequences. Balaam tried to circumvent God's plan, and he introduced, you know, he went back and he says, he says to Balak and his, um, and his people, one way that you can get to God's people, I can't actually curse them, but one way you can get to them is to allow, is to allow your women um, to um, to marry their men, and if they and if that happens, then that will bring down um, the plan of God. And Balaam, Balaam, guess what? Balaam um, succeeded. Balaam succeeded. God's people, God's people, turn their back on God and accepted the accepted the, um, the idea, the suggestion, the plan, the scheming of Balaam. And we saw the result. The result was catastrophic. God's people, God's people, they were deceived. They were deceived. What does that say about us today? It says we must keep our eyes on the prize. We must keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because the evening hour midst, we will have people come in claiming to be a mouthpiece for God. And people come and they say, God told me this. And God has shown me this. God showed them nothing. God showed them nothing. It's, it satisfies their own ideology. Um, and when you wait up with the word of God, it doesn't sit very well. So God tells them nothing. And so you and I need to have our connection tight with God. So that when these errors come, we'll be able to, we'll be able to detect them and we'll be able to mash them down. Balaam, Balaam caused um, catastrophe in, uh, among the people of God. And many, many of them were deceived. You know, let me just, let me just pause for a moment. A few years ago, we had, uh, we had one individual called David Koresh who came into our church. He passed through this church, this very church, and we kicked him out because we discovered what he was saying was nonsense, and we kicked him out. And he went elsewhere within the Adventist church and managed to deceive many and many of our Adventist brethren, they were killed at Waco because of their unfaithfulness to God. Allowing themselves to be deceived by the arch enemy. Oh, Christian friends, you and I must have our eyes wide open. But you know, I said I have our eyes wide open. That implies that we must study the word. Because if we do not study the word, we will be deceived. Um, and when we are deceived, then we are going to fall flat on our faces. Remember now, he who much is revealed to, much is expected. Because if much is expected and we give little, uh, our backs are going to make up for the rest. And so we need to, um, to be mindful about what God wants from us. He invites us to be 
to cleave to him. He invites us to be connected to him. God's people, God's people must, must cleave to him. You know, in our world today, there are two groups. There are just two groups. Either you're on God's side or you're on the devil's side. There is no middle ground. No middle ground. You are either on God's side or you're on the devil's side. And if you are, and if you are not, if you're not doing what God wants you to do, if you're not living how God wants you to live, if you are not, um, if you don't respect the laws of God, then let me tell you, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you are, regardless of how much you have, you are not in keeping with God, and you are in trouble. To her, and to Claudette want to say something, but to have to take the mic to her, though. But we're going to try, because her voice is not... What, what I want to say is that how in this lesson study that we are studying, God sent Moses to teach his people, and they were to learn the ways of how God taught them from beginning. Nobody had exactly, <clears throat> nobody knew exactly what God had done for them more than those people. So the fact when God says, do not add or take away, means it's instruction on their life. And if it involves other nations, they are causing them to die as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It is, um, it is quite clear, it is quite clear that when God has done much for you, um, you ought to remember where God has taken you from. And the children of Israel had much been done for them. God pulled out all the stops for them. And they should have remembered. And you and I are called upon to remember where God has brought us from. Um, and re also remember where God is taking us. And if we turn our backs on him, then we, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. You know, in the Bible, the Bible says, um, you, cannot, you cannot serve two masters. Either you're going to hate the one and love the other and vice versa. Um, two groups of people. Um, those who are on God's side and those who are on the devil's side. Those who are on the right side and those who are on the left side. If we are not on God's side, then Christian friends, we are on the devil's side. And guess what? We, we, we do not have any, any difficulty in understanding what side is the Lord's side. We don't have any misunderstanding or any difficulty in understanding what God wants from us and what God is asking us to, to, um, to do and how, and how we should live. Um, when it is convenient, when it is convenient to us, we claim we don't understand. But you know, friends, um, the, the covenant of God is placed in our hearts. He has written his commandments in our, in our, in our minds, and our hearts, so that we will know right from wrong. We will know when we are doing something wrong and when we are doing something right. Um, God will not um, keep us in a state of ignorance if we have a desire to know. Thank you, Elda. Yes, very true. We have either to be on the side of God or the sight of the devil, but we have to be on the side of God. And here Deuteronomy, we know, is a book of the law. And it says, stay connected with God. Stay grounded with what God has taught us. You don't forget God's teachings. Sup with him. Do what Mary did. Meaning, she spent most of the time with Jesus. So we should spend most of our time with Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, um, you and I, you and I are the light of the world. And uh, why do I say that? The Bible tells us that our Lord, 
that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And when we are connected to the light source, we cannot help but give light ourselves. Isn't that right? If we are connected to the source of light, then we must essentially glow. Um, if we are connected to God, then we must also shed light. We cannot, we cannot be in darkness. And we cannot be darkness. If we are connected to God. The Bible says that. The Bible says once upon a time. We were darkness. But once we have met Jesus Christ. And once we are connected to Jesus Christ. We are now light. A light in a, a dark place. And uh, light and darkness cannot live together. They cannot cohabit. Whenever you put the light on, the darkness disappears. We don't know where the darkness goes, but it disappears. Praise God. It shows the power of light. The power of light. Light roots out darkness. And you and I are called upon to be the light of the world. To get rid of darkness in our world. And we live in a dark world indeed. Our world is dark. Dark. But God would have us transform the darkness into light. He has called us. He has called us to let our light so shine before men. That they, that is men, will see our good work and glorify our Father which is in heaven. And that is the responsibility that God has given to us. This is why he has called us to be a great people. A great nation. And the lesson, um, the lesson says um, there is no nation. It is implied in the caption. There is no nation or no people as great as this people. God's people. God's people. And by interpretive license, let me say this people the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. And I am proud and happy to be a part of this great people because we are God's people. We are special. We are special. And whenever, whenever, we, whenever we allow God to have his way in our lives, we cannot help it but shine forth shine forth. Whenever you connect um, um, a bulb to electricity and you flick the switch, if the bulb is good, then it will glow. It will glow. And if you are connected to Jesus Christ, there is no question, no question, you will glow. And there is no space and no place for you to say, well, you know, God, I, you know, I, I don't think I can do it. Because Moses says to the Lord, you know, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can do it. Isaiah said, you know, I, I can't speak. But God says, hey, who made you? Who made your mouth? Who put words in your mouth? Who gives you what it takes um, to exist day by day? Who wakes you up in the morning? Hey, listen, you didn't do any of that yourself. I did it for you. And I continue to do it for you. And I will continue to do it. And so, Christian friends, um, this morning you are challenged to be, be a part of that great people that God has carved out. Be a part of that great people that God has carved out for today because he has a great job for you and I to do in, in telling the world that Jesus Christ lives and he's coming back to take them to glory. May this be your experience and mine in Jesus' name.